Yellowstone Park, magnitude 3.1 earthquake, hit the supervolcano in this area, as you can see there, that Z on the 11 o'clock area, Hebgen Lake, 3.1 shallow earthquake that hit Yellowstone two days ago. And we had the, as a result, a few hours later, three hours later, a 3.5 in nearby Idaho, about 300 miles west. And the next day we had Long Valley Caldera, 3.3 magnitude earthquake. This is a supervolcano, one of the 20 supervolcanoes in the world. Hebgen Lake, as we know, had a 7.5 magnitude earthquake, August 17, 1959. Kindly support my Patreon channel because YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. I will be uploading at least five videos a day. They will be totally different from the videos that I have on my regular YouTube channel. I hope you'll find them interesting and you'll find the Patreon link in the description box below each video. Thank you. Now this area is part of the supervolcano. The caldera sits on the northwest part of Wyoming, stretching into Montana and Idaho. It was a minor earthquake, shallow. It struck near the town of West Yellowstone, Montana, border of Wyoming, Hebgen Lake area. The scans reveal earthquake peaked at 3.1 magnitude at about 5.58 a.m. local time, November 25th, and the day before Thanksgiving, and earthquake trackers at Volcano Discovery estimate the tremor would have been felt by hundreds of people in the Yellowstone area. They said according to preliminary data the quake was located at a very shallow depth of 5.2 miles. As we know the roof of the magma chamber is about anywhere between 3 to 5 miles down from the surface. Volcano Discovery says shallow earthquakes are felt more strongly than deeper ones of course as they are closer to the surface. And that exact magnitude, epicenter, and depth of the quake might be revisited within the next few hours or minutes. Seismologists review data, refine their calculations, or as other agencies issue their reports. Now, the analysis by U.S. Geological Survey found the earthquake struck at a depth of about 4.6 miles in the Hebgen Lake area, uh, just uh, northwest of the Yellowstone Lake. And this is the caldera of the supervolcano. Now, Yellowstone caldera, which mostly sits on northwest corner of Wyoming, one of the most seismic actively par act seismically active parts of the United States. The earthquakes produced the, uh, by the extensive faults and tectonic features under Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. And the Yellowstone activity is also associated with volcanic fluids and scorching water. We know that it has 60% uh, of the world's geysers are located in the Yellowstone uh, supervolcano area, and it has over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. Now, because the National Park is home to Yellowstone hotspot, a volcanic hotspot responsible for these three super eruptions that took place in uh, the last, well, the oldest one, 2.1 million years ago. There was another one, 1.3 million years ago. And the latest one, 640,000 years ago, which formed the caldera as we see it today. But comparing to Yellowstone's past, Wednesday's earthquake, as we know, was minor. Volcano Discovery said, based on preliminary seismic data, the quake should not have caused any significant damage, but was probably felt by many people as light vibration in the area of the epicenter. And as we said, three hours later, we have 3.5 in Idaho. Idaho is still rocking. It just had, from what I see in Sizemore, Berkeley, I'll leave a link below. It had another one of three magnitude today, the depth of about six uh, miles down. As we said, uh, that area is uh, around uh, north of Boise, Idaho. It's in Stanley, Idaho. That is an area of a volcanic field. Uh, and uh, it's about 300 miles west of uh, the Yellowstone Lake and uh, Hebgen Lake area. 
And a day after that, we had the 3.3 in right over the center of Long Valley Caldera in California, the California supervolcano, which is considered very um, high threat, and it is inflating. It's, it's inflating magma. But anyway, going back to Yellowstone, uh, we have weak shaking felt by population, maybe 1,300 people. Um, and uh, we know that this is background activity. We have about 3,000 uh, earthquakes over the year in Yellowstone. Now, towns or cities near the epicenter where this quake uh, took place might have felt a very weak shaking, including Mammoth, which has a population of 300, and Gardner, population of 900, which is 25 miles away. Corwin Springs, population of 100 people, about 26 miles away and Island Park, population of 300, with a distance of 29 miles away. Now, according to U.S. National Park Service, overseeing the uh, Yellowstone National Park, many of these quakes tend to strike in swarms. And one such swarm in 1985 saw 3,000 earthquakes unfold over three months in the park's northwest side. But none of this is an indicator of any future uh, volcanic, supervolcanic, super eruption activity. Dr. Madison Myers, a Yellowstone expert at Montana University, said, in Yellowstone, those thousands of earthquakes, most of them are under magnitude three. Most of them are associated with fluids moving kind of in that upper crust area, the plumbing of Yellowstone, the water. And uh, she said that it's a huge challenge. I think from a science communication point of view that everyone thinks Yellowstone is going to blow, but it's not where you have a lot of heat and depth at depth and a lot of water, you're going to have this geothermal energy that does not mean anything about the volcanic system, except for that it's still producing heat. Okay, this is by Sebastian Kettley under Express UK, and I'll leave a link below for you on uh, um, Sizewell Berkeley so you can see the nearby earthquakes in Montana and uh, also was taking place in California. A lot of earthquakes, but that's normal.